how do you attract your dream life instead of chasing it? And why do we want to attract our dream life instead of chasing it? Let's talk about that. Chasing is a very needy energy. It's running after it, it's pushing, it's working, it's grinding, it's a lot of energy that comes from resistance of not having the thing. Whereas attracting is a very feminine approach to it. It's knowing that all of the opportunities, the dream life that you want will come to you based on who you are. Think about it this way. Whenever you want to catch a butterfly, there are two ways to catch a butterfly. You can get a butterfly catcher, run around and try to catch the butterfly. That takes a lot of energy, a lot of time, probably a lot of failures, and you're gonna be exhausted by the end of it. And you might catch a butterfly, but probably not as many as you would like to, or the butterfly will fly away. The other way to catch a butterfly is to build a beautiful garden. Whenever you have a beautiful garden, you know that butterflies will automatically come to that garden because what do butterflies love? They love beautiful flowers. That analogy is literally how you attract your dream life. You got to be the garden instead of you being the one chasing around trying to catch the butterfly. That garden represents who you are and that garden is split into four parts. We have your beliefs, your identity, your embodiment, and your connection to yourself. So in this video, I will break down each part for you and what you can do in order for you to attract your dream life instead of chasing it. First, let's talk about the connection to yourself. This is a very important one. You got to get very clear on what it is that you truly want, and it needs to be truly connected to your desires. What I mean with that is I find so many people trying to chase a new reality, a new life based on ideas of other people without realizing that this is not actually the life that they truly want to create. So in order for you to create the life that you truly want, you got to connect it to your deepest desires. Why would you, for example, want a million dollars? Do you only want a million dollars because uh, this is what society tells you you need to be happy? Or will a million dollars for you represent freedom? Will it represent, um, you know, you being able to buy gifts for people in your life? Will it represent something deeper? So whenever you are creating your vision of your dream life, it does need to be connected to the deepest desires of you, not the desires that you think you want. I myself many times have found myself on a journey of trying to create something, trying to attract something without realizing that this was not actually my vision. It was a vision that someone gave me and I didn't actually want that. And that was the very reason why it wasn't happening. And so you got to get very clear on what it is that you want without anyone telling you what it is that you need to want. Next are your beliefs. In order for you to attract your dream life, you need to understand that you have an accumulation of beliefs that are controlling your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions. Those beliefs have been formed through experiences that you've had, successes, failures, whatever that might be in your life. And you might realize right now, as you're listening to this video or as you're going through life, that there are certain beliefs that are no longer a match to the dream life that you want to attract. Think about it this way. If you want to create a dream life that um, involves having a successful online business, your belief cannot be that you are not allowed to take up space. If you want a successful online business, your belief should be that you are allowed to take up space. And so if that belief is deep down in your subconscious and you don't find access to it, it will truly hold you back from creating and attracting the life that you desire. And so you got to understand that your beliefs are deep down in your subconscious, but the best way to identify those beliefs and to bring them to the surface is by you sitting with yourself and asking yourself, okay, what is life mirroring back to me about what I believe about myself? So for example, if you're struggling to build up a successful online business, that might be one belief that comes up. It might be the belief that you're not good enough. It might be the belief that um, you don't deserve success. Whatever that is, you want to get very clear on what that is for you and bring it to the surface and then rewrite that belief. Now, the way to rewrite it, subconscious beliefs is by doing subconscious reprogramming. You can 
can definitely rewrite your beliefs by repeating a new belief to yourself and by taking the action from that new belief. This is another way to prove to yourself that you can do that. But at the same time, you also have to be willing to do the work to reprogram this stuff. That's why I see so many people running around in circles trying to create a different reality without realizing that their subconscious beliefs are actually the reason why they keep creating the same thing over and over again. Connected to your beliefs is your identity. Your beliefs that you have make up your identity. Your identity is who you think you are. That means your identity has also been formed through past experiences, through things that happened, if good or bad. And your identity is um, the reason why you have what you have in your life today. Whenever we look at identity, it is really important to look at all aspects of your identity. For example, and I had this happen with clients before, I had a client who was really successful in her work. She was making a lot of money. She was really happy in terms of that aspect in her life, but she was really struggling to lose weight at the same time. I asked her, I was like, what is your identity when it comes to the health aspect of your life? Like, what do you actually believe about yourself? What do you think you are? Who do you think you are? We came to the conclusion that very early on in her childhood, she would hear stories about how she is just a chubby kid. Like people, grandparents, family, everyone would tell her that she's just a chubby kid and her entire life she's been on a weight loss journey. But that identity has literally formed the image of who she thinks she is. And so today at 40, 50 years old, she is trying really hard to do everything to lose the weight. But because her identity is still the one of a chubby kid, she is still sabotaging herself to never lose the weight in the first place. And if she does, she finds a way to find back to that old identity. And so as you can see, your identity will make you do certain things and are the reason why you are doing certain things. And so instead of trying to do certain things and change that, you got to change who you are being. And so in order for this client to truly start losing weight, she needs to start seeing herself as this new identity of a health conscious person who looks like that and feels like that and no longer has an attachment to her old identity. And then connected to the identity is the fourth point on how to finish up your garden so that you can attract those butterflies, which is your dream life, is the embodiment piece. I see this so many times. People want a different life. They want to be a certain way. They want to create something, but they're forgetting that they are the driving force of the life that they're creating. It's not someone outside of them that will finally give them the opportunity. It's not the place that they're living in. It is not their relationship. It is entirely themselves. And whenever you want to attract your dream life, you have to be the embodiment of the person that you need to be. That means whenever you've worked on your beliefs, whenever you worked on your identity, the next and last and most powerful step is that you start being the person. You start being her. You start embodying her. That means in the example of my client who wants to lose weight, embodying that would mean she signs up to a gym, she makes sure she eats three healthy meals a day, and she moves her body regularly. That is embodiment. Someone who wants to build up a successful online business embodies that, embodies that in her energy. She dresses up a certain way. She shows up in a certain way. She speaks with certainty. She doesn't find excuses to not do the work, but she does it because this is who she is. She embodies truly that. And that is something that I think is oftentimes missed because energy doesn't lie. And if you're not energetically aligned with this new identity, you will do the work, but there is going to be a mismatch and people will not be able to to tell what that is, but they will notice something is off, right? So when you're like looking at someone and you're like, I don't know what it is about them, but something feels off. That is the embodiment piece that oftentimes is missing. You can feel and see when someone truly embodies that work. If, for example, you are a coach, let's say you're a mindset coach like I am, and you're teaching people about how to be um, happier and what to do and, and all of those mindset things, but you're not doing them yourself, you are not embodying this work. And so when you are not embodying the work that you're teaching, you are disconnected to the thing that you want. And so if you want to become a very well-known mindset coach, 
you have to do the work yourself. This is not just about showing the world who you are and all of your great tips, but you got to be her. You got to be her right now. So this is also for you to take inventory and ask yourself, where am I not actually doing the very thing that I might be teaching or I might be saying? And so this is how you truly attract your dream life instead of chasing it. Because once you build this beautiful garden, once you become her, you look at all of those four aspects, you will feel and embody her in a way that is inexplicable. Those butterflies, those opportunities, that dream life will come to you. Ultimately, what this work really is about is it's about becoming the best version of yourself. Ultimately, that's all that it is. This is not about something outside of you allowing you to become the best version of yourself. It is about you becoming the best version of yourself now so that the things outside of you will start to fall into place. You will attract them with ease. That's truly the work that this is about. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know. I'm sending you so much love and until the next time. Bye-bye.